Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So again, got a lot done since last time. I've uh, finally shifted my frame over for the uh, final time on this pass. The edge is uh, right here. And uh, yeah, I'm working on the uh, Romani, the ranch girl today, I think. Cause yeah, I've got her bow. She's pointing her bow at the sky. So we've got that there. So yeah. Yeah, this is moving right along. And there's uh, quite a bit of blocks of, bigger blocks of color here. So this section will go pretty fast. My goal was to reach two thirds or pretty much have this pass done by the end of the month. So we are well on our way to that. We may even start the next pass this month. We'll see, but definitely next month. And I'll probably have a couple months left, I would say for that final pass. Okay. So yeah, my uh, kiddo is, uh, they were studying Macbeth in uh, English class. So today they're having a little, um, a little medieval fashion show and uh, potluck. And uh, of course he forgot until like the night before, because of course, right? Kids, they always do. <laughs> and uh, so, and the rule was you had to come up with some kind of medieval looking fashion, but you couldn't use a pre-made costume and you couldn't spend more than $5 on it. So you were supposed to make it with stuff that you had around the house. So I kind of Googled to find an idea <laughs> and uh, I ended up finding one of his dad's old shirts, uh, dress shirts. So we, uh, we cut the collar off, the, you know, pointy collar part, um, and we cut the sleeves off and I kind of hemmed them. And then I cut all the buttons off. We put some extra holes in it and we put a lace through it. So it laces up the front, kind of like a, yeah. And then I got him a little sort of belt to put around it. So, so at least we, we managed something. I'm sure some people will have far better costumes. <laughs> uh, that was the best I could come up with on short notice. Uh. Oh man, I tell you too, when you're trying to remove buttons from a shirt, trying to remove, you know, trying to uh, cut them off is such a pain, especially the collar buttons. They're very small and uh, I couldn't find my seam ripper. So I was having to try and get my scissor blade in there, which is obviously thicker than, you know, a seam ripper would be. So that was fun. Uh, you know, but of course, when you don't want a button to come off, they just pop right off. No problem, right? Always the way. And then he needed food, so yeah, I uh, whipped up a bunch of cookies because that was, again, the best I could come up with on short notice. So, But at least we managed. Yeah, well, I told him he's doing much better this year at staying on top of his, his uh, homework and things, but when it comes to longer assignments, yeah, he always puts them off and forgets about them. And then he's lucky I got an email reminding us that the, um, whatever we bring to the little banquet, you know, potluck has to be nut free. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't have known and he wouldn't have had anything. <laughs> so I was like, come on, dude. You know, we said, you have a phone with a calendar in it, you know, put it in there, put reminders. Cause I said, I thought we were done with this since elementary school, right? Yeah, so I said, that's your job, right? That's your responsibility is to, is to budget your time and get things done on time. It's a skill you need to learn for adulthood, so. You know, if you need some help, that's fine, but you know, it'd be better to know before, the night before. <laughs> uh.
So again, we're back to a ton of blues here. And some light purples. Well, even some darker ones, but that's sort of part of the color wheel, right? Yeah, once again, it's a chilly day. Every day keeps saying, the forecast keeps saying the next day will be warmer, but then it never comes. <laughs> we had uh, ice fog again, although that melted since, but yeah. It was actually kind of uh, cool the other day. Um, uh, I was, uh, we had to run to the store to grab some chocolate chips to make the cookies and uh, it was cold, but the way the sun was hitting the pavement it caused a little bit of the snow to kind of um, melt and evaporate, but it was still cold enough that it was sort of like hang around the, the ground. So it was like fog on the ground. It was actually kind of neat looking. Yeah, or it's funny when it gets really cold here, you can actually see like steam rising out of the, um, the vents and things because <laughs> it's a little bit warmer. It looks almost spooky. I had to get used to that when we came here. Roads are designed for snow to blow off them as much as possible because, yeah, where I came from, we don't get much snow. So. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, my son was born here, and uh, so we have snow all the time, but he's still super excited for the first snowfall of every winter. <laughs> he immediately wants to go outside and play in it, so. Uh, he'll go in our backyard and shovel walkways to the shed and the garage. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, he's so big now that a couple months back he was shoveling a sidewalk and I thought it was an adult for a second. Just sort of glanced at him, you know, him. Thought one of the neighbors is out there shoveling. And then, oh, wait, that's my kid. Holy moly. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so you can see a bigger section of this color here. Yeah, and again, we got a couple more zeros. So I think I counted, we now are down from 125 colors, we're down to about 110. So. Of course, that's always that last pass where we get to get all our zeros. be careful of my grid lines here because I leave a little slack in them so it won't distort the holes they can get sort of pulled out of place so I have to be careful they don't throw off my counting I've had that happen before I couldn't figure out why everything seemed to be one row off and then it was oh the grid line was row, one row off and it pulled loose and so it was at the nine stitches instead of ten so that was no good So 62.87%. I'm thinking I'll probably hit 63 during this uh, stitching session. That won't take too long. Because I think that's less than 100 stitches, although don't bet on it like I've said before I don't have a math brain so yeah even basic arithmetic I'll often pull out my phone and double check because I don't trust myself yeah 
Yeah, my son was naturally good at math. So I'm like, well, you definitely didn't get that from me. Even when he first started school, his problem was that he didn't like to have to show his work or explain how he got to the answer. He would just know it. Like they would have, you know, bonus questions that were harder than what they were teaching to see if you could, <clears throat> you know, sort of do the next grade up and he could do them. And they're like, well, how'd you know that? He's like, I don't know. I just know. <laughs> uh where he was kind of frustrated because they had where they were teaching kids multiple ways to get to the answer. And then they said, after that, you can pick the one that ones that work best for you. But yeah, he's really frustrated because it's like, okay, we already learned like three ways to do this. I don't want to learn any more of them. You know, I hope I have works, but uh, yeah. I said, though, maybe that would have helped me. Yeah. Like I learned my math by basically just pure memorization, not really understanding it. So. so that's sort of as close to the edge as I like to pin stitch, about five stitches in any closer. And I worry that the, um, the end of it might show past the edge of the design. So in that case, I will instead um, secure my ends by weaving them in towards the uh, center of the design, just to ensure that. Yeah, going for my next um, acupuncture treatment today. Yeah, the uh, first one definitely did help. So, like, they warned me not to expect to see results right away, but, I mean, I'm not cured or anything, but probably never will be, but uh, I've had this issue since I was a kid. But uh, I did notice a difference. There's, I could hold, turn my head and look upwards in a direction that I couldn't look before without it really hurting. There was no pinching, so. And yeah, I was just, I was quite amazed because when I left my first session, I sort of reached up and touched my neck where there's normally a really hard knotted muscle and it was loose. It was like, wow, it has not been relaxed in like ever. I can't remember years. Like I said, I've, I had my first ne uh, nerve pinch when I was nine. So yeah, those muscles have always been super, super tight. Yeah, that was my husband's issue when he had acupuncture after back injury, but it took a while after, you know, a few years of living with it and trying everything else. And they said basically that, yeah, the, the nerve would get pinched, which would make the muscles tighten up, which, you know, compresses the nerve even more and just sort of builds on itself, right? A vicious cycle. The more the nerve compresses, the more the muscles tighten up, which compresses the nerve and it, ugh. And uh, so, yeah, when he had it, it's, it managed to make that muscle release. And then because it stopped pinching the nerve, the muscles stopped tightening. And yeah, it broke that cycle. And uh, yeah, he had that uh, done years ago and uh, he hasn't had the pain come back. So yeah, it was awesome. Of course, his back was good to begin with before the injury. I think mine is genetic, my mom has loose joints and fibro and all that really fun stuff right so yeah but uh, no it was uh it was bad because um our son was a baby and he was having difficulty picking him up even then like out of the crib it was hurting his back and he was still very little and uh but then when he tried this he can pick up our son still now you know <laughs> when he's over 100 pounds now and no pain so yeah I mean, not that he has much occasion to pick him up anymore, right? Yeah, he's almost 16, so. Uh. Yeah, I had to quit picking him up when he was about six, I think. Yeah. I was like, I'd like to, but I cannot anymore. Yeah. My back just could not take it. Honestly, I did it past the point when I should have been doing it. And then I would pay for it later. So it's just like, sorry, dude. Yeah, although he wasn't one for being picked up and carried around. Like, you know, a lot of people can carry their babies on their hip. He did not like that at all. 
he uh, he wanted to be facing outward so he could see everything. So so uh, yeah, no holding him with one arm <laughs> very easily. I had to usually have one around his waist and sort of one hand under one thigh so he could face outwards and look around. And he he wasn't a fan of the uh, snuggly either. You know, the baby wearing, yeah, he, he wasn't a fan of that either. You tried to put him in facing you and he would push with his hands and sort of arch his back away from you and yeah. So, yeah, he still, even now as he's older, he prefers you give him a side hug, not a from the front hug. <laughs> this side because that was disturbing that stitch there it was looking kind of funny okay and I'll start a new strand but I have to do a different stitch first yeah so bigger blocks of color but I'm still breaking it up with these other stitches that'll help my arms from hurting yeah oops let's try that again so then uh, my physiotherapist gave me some exercises to do for my neck, which I actually did them. You know, she said, some people don't. I'm like, no, I'll do them. I'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yep, we need a new strand entirely. goodness there we go Yeah, I've got quite a few colors that are like 20 stitches or less, so. Oh, I don't think I came up in quite the right spot there. Yeah. It's just a fraction off. I'll try that again. And probably nobody would notice, but it's all right. Although you never know, I had one wonky stitch and somebody uh, was kind enough to point it out to me <laughs> that I had missed, uh, saying, you might want to fix this. And yeah, sent me a screenshot on Instagram and yep, she was right. <laughs> so my thanks to her. I haven't had a chance to fix it yet because it's you know, not in the frame right now, but next time I take this off the frame, I will go back and fix it. This 
So I'm not sure what this bit is here because the ranch girl's head is like down here. So I don't know, it's just background, I guess. Yeah, my husband agrees. He thinks that uh, brown stick thing next to his um, sword is the bow. So that's what I figured it probably is. Okay, so we'll do a bunch in a row and then we're gonna shift over to the left a bit and work our way back out. not following a strict diagonal again because the colors kind of went in a bit of a it was more vertical bits so ended up with more of a straighter line it's just the way it worked out Yeah, I often say, even when people are using a similar technique, I think everyone's stitching is, stitching method is slightly different. Unique to them. And it's actually pretty neat how you can have so many paths to uh, the same result. Drop that and let it untangle a bit. So yeah, I try to break up my big blocks of color, sort of do no more than say 20 or 30 in a row. Because yeah, otherwise I can get pain from doing the same movements over and over. Yeah, my grid lines don't sort of always come up right in the corners and that can make it, I end up stitching over them more. I just, I don't count perfectly. I count where the beginning and the end is and then I just kind of, <laughs> yeah. Go across willy nilly, I don't count that much. As long as the lines are straight and intersecting in the correct points, then it'll work. I used to do that, but it was like, no. The whole point of my grid lines is I don't want to count so much. As long as they are straight and in the correct position, it'll work. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh 
Oh yeah, 62.99. So yeah, less than a hundred stitches to get to 63%. So I figured, I figured, yeah, we will reach that no problem. See, I've done a few pin stitches here. Oops. But as I knew this was going to be a darker color here, just cover them right up. Is a shorter bit. Oh, actually, just think here. No, that's fine. So I'm going to park this an extra row down and I'm going to start a new thread from here. Yeah, and do this one for these sort of scattered stitches over here. So that's why I'm doing that. Yeah, so like I said, uh, a kid who can go for his uh, driver's test, <clears throat> his road test, uh, end of the month when he turns. 16 but he said he'd rather wait and do it when there isn't ice out which i don't blame him i did the same thing <laughs> when i got mine but yeah a lot of times my husband will go to pick him up from school they'll take he'll take my car so that a uh, kiddo can drive home for practice he can't take his truck because it's a company truck, so only he's allowed to drive it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, he really enjoyed it. When he got a new one, he got to order everything he wanted, even the color. And, uh, but it took a while because, you know, it's, uh, harder to get vehicles right now with the chip shortage. So, uh. I had to wait longer than he thought, but then he got the call like on his birthday that, oh, your truck's ready. He's like, cool, <laughs> birthday present. <laughs> yeah, he picked white. It's like, I didn't know that that was the color he liked. I guess I should have guessed because he has an older prelude that he rebuilt with his dad. It's a 88. Um, that, uh, yeah, they got, I think it was written off or pretty close to it. And uh, they restored it, and yeah, it was, he painted it white, so. <laughs> Still has it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and they uh, altered it so that it has, instead of two wipers, it has a single one. Just, you know, just to be cool. <laughs> but yeah, his, uh, his dad's a uh, body man mechanic, so, um. Yeah, in fact, that's, uh, he would often do that. Uh, they would buy written off vehicles, fix them up and resell them. So uh, yeah, his first car, that's how he got it from after high school. And uh, it was funny because he often went to work with his dad in the garage and, you know, they wanted it to be a surprise for him, but he knew if they forbid him from working on the truck, well, then he'd know, or yeah, on the car, he'd know something was up, right? So yeah. <laughs> I had to make him think that, yeah, oh, we're going to resell it when actually it was, it was a grad gift for him. So yeah, it was cool though. The prelude, um, his, uh, he took his sister to the prom, gave her a ride to the prom in it. And even the people with limos were like, wow, cool. You know, so, so she didn't have to pay for a limo rental. And yeah, everyone was talking about the cool car. So. Yeah, it doesn't drive it much because it's not very practical out here. It's lowered to the ground and yeah. 
flats if be careful not to bottom out in places because it's made to look like it's for racing so even though it's not but uh well and he said one thing that's kind of frustrating is when you do drive it everybody does want to race you you know <laughs> oh he said it was so funny though one time because he was at uh he was at a stoplight and the guy next to him sort of looks at him and starts revving his engine well he noticed there was a police car like around the corner uh, so my husband sort of, you know, pretends back that revs his engine too, like he's gonna, and then light turns green and the guy just, you know, takes off. And my husband just sort of pulls out normally, you know, like whatever. And, uh, and next thing you know, the police pulls him over. It's like, well, dude, you started it, you know? <laughs> You're the one who wanted to race, not me. I didn't egg you into it. Ugh. Good, this strand should be just long enough. Oh, I think I counted wrong here. Yes, I did. I put that three from the, okay, I don't know why I did that. Yeah, it should be right here. Yes, because then this is not long enough otherwise. Yeah, okay. Don't know why I did that. Okay, good, nothing snagged yet. Oh, I did. Oh, silly me, look at that. Haha. <laughs> I did not have my uh, screen pulled over all the way. Ah, so I did have it in the right place, doing. <laughs> oh, I tell ya. Ah, oh, silly, silly me. Okay. <laughs> fix the, the fix there. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't broken. I shouldn't have fixed it. Yeah, that's my motto, hey? Oh, I hate when they take a perfectly good product and it's new and improved and it's like, guys, if it ain't broke, right? It was fine the way it was. And it's like, it's, in my opinion, it's like, it's never improved. It's always worse. Uh, yeah, I'm still annoyed at, uh, I used to buy, I've been eating the same brand of bread since high school, and they changed it a few years ago. Uh, I'm still annoyed about it. It's like, it was fine the way it was, and then they changed it to be, yeah, not as dense and chewy, which I actually liked, so... Yeah, I'm not a lighter than air kind of person. Like, I'm not a big fan of cake. I'd rather have a brownie. But, like, something that's more dense and chewy. Not something that's barely there when you eat it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let's keep making sure we do that. I think because the... The last, one of the other projects I worked on wasn't a full 10 stitches wide at the end. It was like eight. And so, yeah, I forgot that this one is a full 10. So I need to make sure that I'm all the way, that it's showing all the stitches all the way to the right edge there. Silly me. But luckily, I discovered my mistake before I actually stitched anything wrong. So there's that. I'm just going to stitch this over a little bit further. I realized I was kind of too close to the edge there, so I skipped over a couple stitches to bring it far enough in from the edge that the end will not show. These pieces are short, but I think I can do a single confetti stitch later. With it, so I'm going to save them. Because I'm cheap like that. <laughs> okay. Right, so this next color, I decided I was going to start a new thread entirely.
probably end up with a few here. I have one sort of parked over a couple of them actually already parked in this general vicinity, so Oh, excuse me. Yeah, my other Legend of Zelda project, the stained glass one, the black take is like a third, the background is like a third of the pattern, so yeah, that one's going to take a while. But yeah, it makes a good travel or mindless stitching when I'm tired project, so that's why I gave it a start as well. Okay, I'm just going to check both threads here. Yeah, that one's pretty long. I think this one is, yeah, not terribly. So this one is probably just enough. Come on. Yeah, for these four stitches here, that'll be it. We'll see. Okay, actually, I'm going to carry this a bit. I'm going to park it, yeah, in that one there. It's kind of by itself, and then that way the other strand can carry on and not jump around. So, yeah, that's why I chose to do that. Okay, 317. Yeah, we're now past 63. <laughs> Come on, needle. There. Just couldn't get a good enough grip on it. Okay, this is a longer one, but that's a bit further than I want to carry it, so I'm going to tie this off. If I can get it to cooperate, there we go. It can take a little bit of fiddling to get it to, uh, to be able to do that from the front and not have to turn the work, but... I find the time saved turning the work makes it worth it. Plus, it saves my back. Yeah, 
I discovered when I was using a, a stand that uh, it didn't swivel all the way around and I had to sort of bend over to, to the side to access the back, it would hurt. <laughs> yeah, I would be very sore by the end of a stitching session, so. It's definitely worth it for that too. That one and that one. And the colors are kind of going opposite the diagonal bit here. So that results in a bit of more color changes and sometimes a bit more threads, but that's okay. Like I say, the stopping to change colors gives me a built-in little break. It helps save my arms. Oh, I love having Pattern Keeper here because I think otherwise I would be mixing up this one too easily with this symbol like I mean they're obviously not the same but my eye could get tricked but yeah I noticed on this pattern I have one big capital O then I have a small O and then there's a zero that's kind of a little skinnier and it's like oh man without pattern keeper I would be mixing those up a lot so yeah When you have over a certain number of colors, yeah, you kind of run out of symbols to uh, to represent them. So, uh, yeah, having a computer search for them for you is much easier. Oh, I forgot. I was in the wrong mode, yeah. I was double tapping to park, but if I double tap when I'm in move mode, then... Uh, it selects or deselects the uh, color, depending, so. Oh, come on, both strands here. Okay, so this is a short one. Yeah, we're gonna have to start a new, a new thread. I think, yeah, one stitch is all we're gonna get out of this piece of floss here. Apologize if my furnace is a little loud. The my husband put a new filter in yesterday, and it kind of sounds like a whistling kettle when it comes on. Oh, it's a little annoying. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe later I'll go and wiggle it around a bit, and see if I can get it to stop making that noise. Oh, yeah. Again, this one is still far from that. that other stitch down here so stop and restart when I get to it come on needle couldn't slide off the thread anymore and split it. I had to cut it out. I mean, it was a short piece enough that I was going to throw it away anyway, but yeah. It's kind of frustrating when that happens. Sometimes it's the eye of the needle is too rough at that point. It's time to replace it, but we'll see how it does on this strand.
said mostly bigger blocks, but I mean, there is still some more complex work here. Pardon me. Ugh. Yeah, so we passed, I passed 30,000 stitches total yesterday. So, woo! -hoo. So yeah, I was right the other day. 36,000 is 75%, not two thirds because yeah. <laughs> yeah, 12,000 is for each 25%, so. There's even more math in knitting. <laughs> Yeah, and said if I didn't realize how much there was, I might not have uh, taken it up, but yeah, especially since I started making clothes, if you want them to fit properly, there's quite a lot of math involved. If you're making blankets, you know, you can sort of get away with it not being exactly the same gauge as the pattern, but yeah. It's one reason why I like to use the same brand of yarn once I find it. I know exactly how many stitches and rows per inch I get. So then, yeah, that makes my calculations a little easier. So then I often use a very same basic measurements for the sweater and just change, you know, add a cable or whatever. Or a lace panel or something to make it unique. So you have to adjust accordingly because cables pull in and yeah that changes things a bit but knitting is stretchy too so there's a bit of a bit of more give to it than say with sewing which has to be often a lot more precise yeah yeah sewing is definitely not my strength when i was uh making uh my son's uh little medieval costume oh hemming up those armholes was not fun <laughs> It's not, you know, perfectly straight, so, yeah. But, ah, good enough. I said, well, we'll say you're a peasant, so, of course, your stuff isn't going to be perfect. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it was actually interesting at my prom. A few of the, uh, a few of the girls went medieval style for their prom dresses. I ended up, I found a bridesmaid's dress that I actually liked. <laughs> yeah, and I actually wore it again to a couple of weddings. So, although that was a long time ago, I'm betting it won't fit anymore. <laughs> had a baby since then so yeah and it was like a you know silky kind of uh material so it's got no give to it so I'm pretty sure if I tried to put it on I would split the seams now honestly I should probably donate it somewhere <laughs> yeah yeah it was wild it was so long of a dress and of course I'm short even with my big heels on yeah, I had to get like, oh geez, something like six inches cut off the bottom. 
Yeah, I had similar with my wedding dress. And uh, it was nice though, my, um, my mother-in-law asked if we could have the piece that they'd cut off the bottom when they hemmed it. And uh, she made the ring bearer's pillow out of it and uh, a little uh, a little bag for me that went around the wrist with a drawstring. Yeah, so it was nice. Matched the dress and I could carry, you know, like a chapstick in, the, in there and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it turned out really well. Yeah, she's good at sewing. I'm not. Yeah, she made um, the flower girl dress for my husband's youngest sister and uh, she made shawls for all the girls because we ended up getting spaghetti strap, strap dresses and then we were married in January so it was cold so <laughs> yeah so I bought my shawl a white one and then she made blue ones for the for the gals yeah so yeah I was definitely grateful for that because uh and she made our wedding cake too yeah that's another thing I have no talent for, but she's really good at it. Okay, just remembered, I wanna check the other one. I think this was the short one. Mm, actually, I think I can get these stitches down here done with it. So I can park this one in a different spot. So that's why I was checking that, put that there. Okay, so now we gotta go way over to the left and work our way back out again. We'll see if we can manage to work with this many threaded needles or not. Usually I can. Found, yeah, the more practice I've got at it, the more needles I can have live and not tangle them up. Yeah, my, uh, my mother-in-law had never made wedding cake before, so she had to practice a bit. And uh, yeah, the younger kids didn't mind. My husband's the oldest of six, so... Uh, yeah, the youngest four were still um, living at home. So yeah, they got to make all of her practice, <laughs> her practices. Yeah, although fondant, yeah. I don't know who actually likes it. It's like eating freaking, I don't know, Play-Doh or something. It's, yeah, it looks nice, but uh, it's it's not very yummy, that's for sure. At least not my thing. It's like eating clay or something. The texture is not good. But of course, that's why it's really good for decorating. It holds its shape really well. No, no cracks or, you know, spreading lines or anything. So my dad's good at uh, cakes as well. He actually made me a teddy bear cake <laughs> when I was a kid for my birthday. He made it look like my actual teddy bear. So, yeah. I mean, I can bake desserts and they taste good, but yeah, decorating them is not my thing. Again, I think because that's more of a freeform thing. Like with this, you know, making little pixels, little squares to make the picture, I can do that because it's, you know, everything is already like sort of the structure's there, right? You just have to fill it in. But yeah, making icing roses and stuff, yeah. That's more freeform, and that is definitely not my thing. Okay. That one's kind of fuzzy coming up there, so that's why I didn't park there. Yeah. 
I think coming up there would have just pulled some ends up even more and made it look even worse. So yeah, we're definitely gonna end up with multiple strands of this color. So grab another one here. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into Romani now here. Yeah, because uh, there's the bow, there's her arm, so. And then further on down her dress is like mostly a couple of colors, so that'll go super fast. I probably won't get to that today, but yeah, when I do get to it, it's gonna, it's gonna go very quickly. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking I may get the next pass started because a lot of this sort of the last few huh, few rows down from like say yeah row 100 down to 130 is very few colors so that should go pretty quick to fill that in oops yeah, and then we'll start the next side we get uh, I think there's like a brick to wall and then a Goron link Yeah, so I don't think we're gonna get any of Deku Link in this in this pass, which like I said, is kind of funny because that's the very first form uh, Link gets turned into in the game is into a Deku scrub. So uh, yeah, it's kind of funny that he'll be the very last form that we, we stitch on this, on this uh, project. Yeah, that form was a lot of fun. You could hop across the water and blow bubbles <laughs> and fly from the flowers. But then he was uh, very vulnerable to fire because he's basically like made of wood, so. There's that. If you landed in lava with him, then yeah, you died and respawned. <laughs> and the little dog, the dogs don't like you. Little dog in Clock Town's always jumping on you and knocking you or growling, and then he jumps you and knocks you over. It's like, what did I ever do to you, you little jerk? <laughs> yeah, and if you're a Goron, he's terrified of you. He'll growl and then he'll run away. And uh, if you're Zora, he loves you. He's like, ooh, and following you around. Yeah. So, and if you're regular Link, then he just, he's kind of indifferent. He doesn't really care runs around barking. Oh, no, that's not correct. It should be three from the grid line. There we go. I almost parked that wrong. Okay. piece of hair was tickling my chin. That was annoying. <laughs> so I just clipped it back. Yeah, it was funny when you're the Deku scrub in the palace and uh, they tell you, you know, you can go into the main chamber, but don't go anywhere else, which of course you do. And um, if you get caught, then the little guard, he's all mad and jumping up and down and says, I told you not to go into, you know, anywhere else except the main chamber. But they never stop you, right? Yeah, it's quite funny. Well, of course, because otherwise it'd be too frustrating, right? So you get unlimited chances, but yeah, every time he gets mad, or we thought, I thought it was funny, like in the Gerudo Valley and uh, in Ocarina of Time, and you get 
thrown in their prison cell, but they leave all your inventory so you could just hookshot your way out of there. And they never bother to search you or anything, right? Uh, they don't wonder how you keep getting out or anything like that. So, yeah. It was funny because I actually played one computer game where when you got captured, they actually took all your inventory and you had to start over. Yeah. Because a lot of times in these games, like they throw you in, you know, a cell, but then they leave your lockpick kit on you. Like, come on, who's going to do that, right? <laughs> so then, yeah, you get out like, you know, two seconds later. <laughs> uh... I think this is the short one. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do this one stitch and then that'll be it. Yeah, I really need to remember to empty my ends container. It's overflowing. Some people say actually save their little um trimmed bits. I saw where someone said they actually make a Christmas ornament out of them so they get those clear those clear ones and you fill it up with the and they'll even put like the year and the name of the project they were working on which is like kind of cool. Or I saw one who her jar she kept a big like quart jar for um, her ends to work on a project so you could actually see sort of like layers of colors from where she was working which was kind of cool. Not exactly in a rainbow because, of course, in the project it's not going to go in the you know rainbow order. But yeah, it was pretty neat. I just throw mine away. But yeah, I mostly just keep it containers so that they're not everywhere. At least not as much, even though they do kind of end up everywhere no matter what. Ugh. Okay, so again like I'm going to head back over here and start my way over again. In fact, what I may do is set all this aside and carry on, yeah, working on this diagonal now. As you can see, it's kind of getting wider, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Like I say, I don't work in strict diagonals, so I had sort of this whole square here to fill in but now that I filled that in yeah I think I'm gonna head over to the left and work my way downwards more than over to the right so I'll do an order sort of a like this and then I'll do another one until I get to the edge again so moving back into more of a diagonal direction I think there so resetting that kind of makes that a little simpler fewer needles in play Stretch a little.
Oops, so here's her arm aiming the bow at the sky. Oops. Oh, that won't work. There we are. Fairly long piece. I thought maybe it would be shorter, but nope. Okay, so I'm gonna park it over here, sort of at the bottom of this flow. And I'll carry it yeah, upwards and back down. See how much we get out of it. Probably that'll be it. Okay, looks like, yeah, I'm going to have to do one out of order here. Just because of the way the colors are crossing towards each other. Let's take a peek. Yeah, I will. So, I'm going to do this one, and I'm actually going to do this one here, even though it's out of order, because I want to be able to carry the thread upwards. And I need to sort of do it before the other stitch is between. So, yeah, either way, I would either have to add another thread or do something out of order. So occasionally I will do that. I find if I only do it every once in a while, that doesn't, uh, it doesn't affect the neatness as much. A little bit, but not as much. Oh, no, I did that wrong. Every now and then it's kind of, oops, I grabbed the wrong thread. As soon as I picked it up, I went, that's not 3860. Yeah, 3860 is like a very light cocoa kind of color. So I knew that could not be correct. So yeah, I try to not close in unstitched squares but sometimes it's just more trouble than it's worth so Ooh, look at that more than 200 nice there wasn't enough resistance against the needle so I know it didn't catch enough strands. Try that again. There. Yeah, I can tell by feel now. 
first few times I turned my work to double check. Now I know by feel whether I've, I've caught enough by how much, yeah, how much resistance there is to pushing the needle through. If there's not enough, then I haven't caught enough stitches to secure it. And I need to back up and try again. Okay. Let's take a look here. Okay, let's see if we've got a short piece or not. Yeah, I think we'll fill in this bit, this gap, and then I won't have a gap anymore. <laughs> Actually, I have left over two strands, so instead of a loop start, I will use I will use my away thread method. So I'll start there and leave just a little bit showing. And just make sure that secure that thread along the back with these wraps. Oh, did I not? Oh, do I have something parked there? Oh, look at that. I think I have a thread of that color parked there and I just didn't realize it. Okay. Oops. Look at that. Even with just one wrap, it's uh, already quite secure. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I think I just forgot to mark that it was parked there. Silly me. Yeah, those are the same. Okay. I guess I don't need my away thread then. Yeah, sometimes I do that. <laughs> so actually, it was parked there and I just forgot to mark that it was parked there. Yeah. Okay. Let's try not to sew another thread in there because that's no good. over a bit to there there we go so now that gap is nicely filled in all right we'll stitch for a wee bit longer and then I'm gonna take a break and stretch and do my physio exercises before I forget <laughs> So I think I'm going to take a break there. So um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.